Hey, good day, and thanks for tuning in to Raspberry Canoe. My name is Andrew Laframboise, and I'm about to take you on an adventure. This is a blind date five day hella tour, um, and I'll get into the details in a moment. Uh, we're going to be covering over 120 kilometers in five days, probably averaging around 5k a day in portaging, from what I can gather. Uh, the twist is it's a blind date. I'm actually being picked up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. by somebody I have never met in person before. And we're going to do this together. And the next twist is it will be uh, in separate boats. So it's going to be my first solo um, mission uh, in a boat. Never done it before. And the last thing is just because, you know, we need to add a little bit more spice to this. Apparently the black flies in Algonquin right now are at an all time high my buddy came back and he goes, my God, it hasn't been this bad in 20 years. So we got to get eaten alive while on a blind date going for the heliportage uh, loop of a lifetime. So if that isn't uh, much of a, a hook to get you interested, I don't know what else will be. So come on, let's go and have some fun with Raspberry Canoe. So we landed here at 9, a little bit before, we're all ready to go, we're going to take the shuttle over to Canoe and then uh, embark on a trip up to Sunbeam for the day. The weather looks pretty sketchy, uh, we are prepared for it. Um, everybody we talk to says, well man, that's one hell of a trip, so anyway, you can see the canoe size difference in Sergei's canoe, it's about a foot shorter than mine, much narrower, about 10 pounds lighter. But I'm making up for my weight with backpack. He's, he's about 20 pounds heavier at the backpack. So we've we got enough stuff. Um, I am a little bit nervous. It's my first time ever solo canoeing. And uh, once I get started, I'm sure I'll be fine. But I'll let you know how it goes. Unless I dunk the thing first moment. But that hopefully isn't the case. Anyway, wish me luck. And uh, yeah, this is the Algonquin. I guess 120 kilometer round trip, five day tour, uh, about to begin. Blind date styles. So we're just uh, at Canoe Lake. Shuttle just dropped us off at the Portage store. And we're getting ready to embark on Canoe Lake. Wish me luck. I'm going to need it. Taking a quick lunch break around 1 o'clock. This is George River. Doing quite well on the solo. And no bugs. Yet. Bonus. So, ox tongue to Blue Jay Vanishing Pond. We pretty much got 320 right now. And uh, got another hour or so left in the day, but we're getting to the end. So far, the weather's been cooperating, and the bugs are great. Like, there are none, so that's awesome. Good day. Yeah, so we're wrapping up this 405 meter portage. And, uh, you know, the day's going really well. Um, the canoe is is big and it's getting blown around a bit and it's not perfect but uh, it's manageable and feels very safe I just have to every so often do some some acts of uh, I guess extreme energy to to write it but uh, definitely Sergey is a much more experienced um, paddler than I am and he has the right boat uh, and, and it's just amazing to watch how he can just make that boat move sitting more centered and so narrower so anyway super great trip so far and I'm learning a lot really happy to, that, that uh, I was able to get the time to do this no portage action oh yeah the slog with the life jacket on I don't even feel this boat. In fact, I'm, I can walk for 
I can walk two, three kilometers non-stop, no issues. And that's after being on the water since nine and it's 3.30 now. This is only 450 meters or something, so it's really nothing. Ooh. Oh, better put this down. I got some swampage to deal with. This is called a slog. Five o'clock and sunbeam. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, what's that? Ten to five, eh? Solid day. Plus a lot of driving for you. It's just floating on sunbeam right now. It's a beautiful lake. Just checking out campsites. Something else, eh? Yeah, just loading the pack up front there like that and having the 20 liter um, dry bag got us to some of the bigger water today in the wind. And I haven't had that iron way over there. I think that's going to be amazing. Slow smoked steak. Wow. Waking up on Sunbeam. It's uh, 6.30. I'm all packed up. Just ready to make some breakfast. It's supposed to be downpouring right now. It's at 80% chance of torrential rain today starting now. So we're going to get our asses in gear and get out while we're getting good and cross our fingers. It's a pleasure to not be packing up in rain and um, it's, it's, uh, haven't been bitten by a block by yet. So there's a couple of major pluses going on right now. Second day in the morning and I'm just exploring the island in hopes of maybe spotting something pretty cool on the shoreline over here. We're just about packed up. 7 a.m. and I'm fed and packed everything. It didn't start raining. It kind of drizzled, but it was this magical moment when I woke up and it wasn't raining and I knew I could just pack everything. Today's strategy got a pretty big day, lots of portages, uh, about three hours of portaging in small water. It's supposed to downpour all day, so my strategy is Patagonia, Houdini, uh, it's not too cold out, uh, and my poncho. It's not what I would call a perfect solution, but my goal is that all of my real clothes are actually packed away nice and dry. It's supposed to clear up at 6 p.m., also known as the time we're going to arrive. Therefore, I should be able to hang on my Houdini and stuff, and it'll dry in 10 minutes. I'll have a nice uh, set of dry clothes to put on in the evening. Um, again, not ideal, but I'm going to test a solution. I would not recommend it for anything colder than today. Uh, and it has alerted me to the fact that I am a little bit deficient in decent, solid rain gear. I'll let you know how it goes. It might be the perfect sort of summer, spring, late spring, summer, early fall solution. And right now it is actually warm out. Probably right now I'm hot. I slept hot last night. Beautiful day though. Beautiful day in the morning there. And we're all packed up. Uh, we packed up before it got rainy, meaning that we will have dry gear to uh, open up when we get to our site. This is an aggressive trip. Just wrapped up the portage from Sunbeam to Canada J. 855 meters, pretty good run. We're at Grassy Bay and we just finished the, what, triple portage? Probably close to three kilometers, I think, eh? 
close to four kilometers. And uh, 7.30 start, what are we? Wow, it's uh, 10.15 now and my, my 7.30 alarm went off when we were off the island, so we're doing pretty good, I think. 7.30? Yeah. It's wet. <laughs> to my best estimates, we're doing around 20 kilometers a day over five days, so 120 kilometers. And I'm paddling that bigger boat. It's got some serious disadvantages, but I can make it work, and I have. I'm, I'm just watching my partner take one casual paddle for every two powerful paddles I make. And that was just a slog all day yesterday. Um, he's also fantastic at portaging. I don't know how he does it. He's using an approach that I, I really dig. I'm not, not going to use it yet, but he just has special boots. Just walk in the water with them. Uh, his feet get wet, but they just drain out. So it's just this really cool approach that I, I see a lot of experts using and I'm probably going to migrate to. I hate wet feet though. But today I'm planning on being pretty damn wet so we'll see how it goes. We made Little Trout Lake by noon. Found our campsite at 12.45, big lake. And the second we got out of our boats, we had to get out of our clothes. And they're all drying right now. The weather again has been orchestrated to meet our needs. Ah, look at this. Wow. So we're on Big Trout Lake. It really only took us about five hours to get here today. We, we did great time, even that much time. I got the fire going over there in the background. We've got our tent set up face to face under a tarp. Raining a little tiny bit right now, but for the most part our day, really the weather orchestrated in our favor. Uh, it was raining the whole time we were in a canoe, but there was really no wind. And then the wind was on our back. Uh, what could have been a two or three hour canoe through white trout turned out to be an hour. Uh, made great time here, and now we are about to start rehydrating some meals and uh, get into eating campsite came preset with all the wood we need and although it's been raining all day got a great fire going now let's check it out rehydrated split pea soup with sausage and chickpea noodles mm -mm. He's out there, you can't see him in this, there's two. All day we were with the loons. It's too wet to have the camera. This is his day three, waking up some sun out with thunderstorms last night. Stuff good. Time to get the camp broken down, get some breakfast and everything going. So about to debark, almost eight, on our way to Burnt Root. The day looks better than yesterday at this time, but uh, who knows? I'm going to follow the same exact system I did yesterday at work. Sitting in reverse, bag out front. Canoe is almost perfectly balanced. And I can fill this little dry bag here with water. Right now, currently used for my stuff to actually add more weight to the front. Confident as I can be. Solo man. Portage off our first day, just getting started here. 10 to 9, and I'm not even sure how many meters that is, but uh, I guess we'll get to you on the other side. 
Goodbye, Big Trout. So like a 300 meter portage from Trout Lake to this lake, which I'll have to uh, note in the comments. And uh, the three kilometers on this lake until we start a series of little portages and uh, end up at Burnt Root. Oh, better go. Completely blown away. Petawawa River. Little 40 meter portage because we're not doing that. Petawawa River, just after the 40 meter portage to get around those rapids behind me. Beautiful place. It's 11 o'clock. We've been out since about 8, 8, 8 15, 8, 10 maybe. And we're just enjoying the day. The weather is getting better and better. Oh, I'm getting drawn back into the current here, so bye. Well, my first time running rapids. Might as well go alone. Should be very interesting. This is the most beautiful site. Well, we've got wood. Like, I mean, we got wood. We got trees that have fallen on top of trees. We got all kinds of widow makers. We're, we're pretty safe where we're camping. But I'm gonna chop a tree down. I'm gonna do a service. This guy right here. Oops, I'm standing dead all the way up. And probably gonna fall on my head when I chop. I don't know what's going on above. Uh, let's give it a shot. Browning camp axe. Ten minutes worth of work. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed, man. And we're started. Dehydrated chili, vegetables, beets, and some noodles. This should be good. So uh, wrapping up day three, today was a beautiful day. Uh, started off a little cloudy, we had a sunrise, and uh, we got underway by about 8.10. We arrived here, some being to Burnt Root, right around 12.15, campsite 12.45. We've been just taking this in all day. Um, sunset's unbelievable, the site's beautiful. You can just see everything here. Tomorrow we head over to Hogan. And, uh, and then we have the big slog the next day to get back to the car. Before camp's pretty much broke. We're just uh, finishing up the final touches. It's gonna be a windy one with the wind behind us for a bit of the day. It's cold, but we will be on the water by 8 a.m. again for sure. That's how we roll. Let the wind take us home, man. I could probably get the paddle a second, but you never know the way I'm moving. Goodbye, Burnt Root Lake. Perhaps one of the most beautiful lakes I've ever been on.
most beautiful campsite. Camp axe processing a full tree, giving us the best fire ever and still able to shave afterwards. These are amazing things. Oh, gotta go. Uh, what do you say, Sergey? We've uh, had the weather has been choreographed to our actions, eh? It's like uh, every move. I actually stood on my canoe and did the old uh, like Italian oso lo mio across it standing up in the middle of my boat using my paddle as a as a push as like one of those uh, I forgot what they call them but it was fantastic I didn't even miss a step I love it so burnt root 750 meter portage to Lake Lemur got around three or four kilometers to get to our next portage. It's a relatively easy day. The barometer keeps saying the weather's getting better and so far so good, but it is a chilly one. Beautiful battling weather though, and not a black fly to find us. Unbelievable. Just taking a quick break in the Narrows as we cross from Lure Moor Lake over to the portage point, another kilometer or so. Weather is playing absolutely perfect for us today. It's cold, but uh, the barometer just keeps raising. And it looks like we're gonna have a similar sort of day as we did yesterday. Probably arrive one o'clock or so at our campsite, be able to set up some beautiful camp, eat, prep some food. Yeah, what a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous day. Algonquin. And, uh, there's been no black flies or mosquitoes or anything, just in case you're wondering. So this is pretty good. We got ourselves Lemur to little Madawaska. And off to Hogan via this beautiful boardwalk here. In fact, I think I'm gonna have a couple snacks. Don't put me on this video. <laughs> oh man. Hey guys, so it's uh, day four of a five day trip to Algonquin. It's my, uh, my blind date. Um, I'll give more details later on how this actually became. Anyway, we have had some fantastic weather. No black flies. We're sitting here now on beautiful Hogan Lake. Just check this out. On a private beach. We have an island with a lagoon. This is just the offside. And uh really be happier. This is this is absolutely amazing. This is like magic. Anyway. Thanks for tuning in. And uh until next time, happy hiking.
dinner tonight, some noodles, dehydrated vegetables, dehydrated chili, some dehydrated beets, and a little bit of chopped up sausage. It's probably take about 30 minutes to get ready. Just fill this up and I've got myself a meal that is going to keep me very happy. Tomorrow's supposed to be a difficult day of rain and long distances, so wish us luck. Tonight is beautiful. One of the most gorgeous camp sites I've ever been to on Hogan Lake. Wow. So, this is one of the first trips I've ever been on since I was a child, where I wasn't leading the trip, essentially, and, and though I was part of a a co-leadership on this blind date. Uh, we both came fully prepared to be soloists and we used separate canoes. Um, the fellow that I'm uh, blind dating with uh, has a lot more knowledge than I do and I definitely appreciated all the learning that I've been able to pick up. I am now confident enough to take my daughter uh, by myself on a canoe um, I'm actually hiking here to the other campsite here and I will do so on weekends when I can get a campsite locally at say Kawartha Highlands or whatever. I have the confidence to really plow deep like um, we, we were we're in at Hogan Lake right now and, and we could have got here yesterday. Uh, we're putting in easy days um, based on my uh, lack of uh, confidence um, uh, by myself in a canoe, but now with a it may be a bit bigger than uh, ideal, but I was able to deal with some pretty good headwinds and uh, use various different techniques with my pack up front, uh, using a 20 liter bag full of water to pretty much overcome everything. Check it out, man. Whew. And we're just walking from one end of the island to the other here. Uh, we saw a moose. I don't know what kind of video footage of this moose I've got, but I tried to get some pictures of video footage of him. But he, a bunch of birds woke up, sort of got startled by us and hit the road fast and hard. And the moose looked up at me and just stared at me as I was drifting silently. And uh, once I had to put my paddle in the water to stop from hitting the side of the river, he just had it into the woods. Slug, slug, slug. It was a beautiful thing. Beautiful sight. We'll be on our way in less than 20 minutes. 7.30 launch. 22 kilometers in the rain today, boys. Straight to a nice hot shower. It's going to be great. Nothing starts your morning like a 3750 portage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to call our start in five minutes, 8.05. Uh, a little about an hour and 20, 10 minutes to portage 3.5k. Now we're on Crow Lake, heading towards Crow River. Whew. Slog. The Crow River, quarter to 12. Another 30 minutes of this river. No moose. Stop to grab a quick snack. I'm Pool Lake after the Crow River coming in on 10 to 1 and we've got about an hour of paddling left in a small portage till we pick up the taxi at Opiango. I am uh, left something wrong with me because I am like just loving canoeing into the wind uh, by myself in a, in a boat. I figured out some way to actually make the canoe kind of catch the wind almost like a sailing technique I'm not sure if I'm doing this right or not but I just catch this angle and suddenly the boat starts to go and I just keep it on that line and it moves so I'm actually really excited uh, but we're on that 
kind of cold enough and wet enough and just just annoying enough that you got to keep kind of moving or you get cold so i'm going to get back on the water and well, we're probably gonna have a couple hours to play around with before the taxi picks us up so we'll figure out how to get ourselves warm i guess change and and prepare ourselves for the uh taxi ride back to our nice warm car and reality fantastic trip i am now officially uh very confident um canoeist by myself uh, and I am looking forward to doing some weekend trips with my daughter, um, where I would never have thought of doing that before. Algonquin, I really love you. Anyway, we will talk soon. 1.30, we've got like a 500 meter portage left, just... I'm letting the wind blow me to where it is because we've got uh, over two hours to wait for our taxi. It's one of those things, right? You don't want to be late. And uh, when you're early, well, you can relax. It's been raining most of the day, and uh, we've struggled to stay warm. Um, just being active and plowing through the day has been our, our method. Uh, myself personally, I'm perfectly fine. I'm actually going to give a big shout out to the uh, the Patagonia um, Houdini gear. It's not the right gear, and I could have been left uh, in a different pickle if the rain persisted for more than one day in a row. But uh, it was the perfect combination of breathability and, um, I guess, wind defense and dry to just keep me fine and. I don't know if I could ever go without this uh, good old-fashioned Costco life jacket. It's actually the warmest thing with me right now, and uh, it's keeping me toasty, too. Take it off, and I freeze. So I am really, 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 really happy I came on this trip. My skill has come up on a canoe um, tremendously, and I couldn't pay for lessons like this. It was experience of my partner here. Who, uh, I'm, I think I've got the uh, learning end of the stick. I did pack a lot lighter than him, and maybe he'll pick up something from me. But uh, for the most part, he's very prepared to deal with all situations. And uh, it doesn't require GPS or anything like that to get the job done. So, wow. One thing I wish I would have brought was a fishing rod. All the trips not to bring a fishing rod. I thought, boy, oh boy, I might be... Uh, too much for me to keep up with this guy and you know what this guy goes like crazy and uh, I could have brought the fishing rod though what uh what uh I lack in skill I make up for in pure heart and determination story of my life anyway cutting out for now the last portage Just wrapping up the last of this uh, leg, five days from a canoe to Opiango up through Sunbean, Big Trout, Hogan, and uh, anyway, really appreciate you guys. Hope you enjoy the video and talk to you soon. Hey guys. How many canoes we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. With three people. Uh, I guess they're staying somewhere around the corner. Or maybe they were just delivered here by taxi. I don't know. It's called a Canadian. It's called a Canadian shit show. <laughs> Winding up our last night here on Hogan Lake, and tomorrow is supposed to be 
torrential rainstorms starting wee in the early morning to get us out. So uh, I'm going to say goodbye now from the interior of Algonquin. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to Raspberry Canoe. I really uh, appreciate everybody who watches. And if you like what we're doing, please subscribe, like, and share. Until next time, happy hiking.